I've told this story before. I'm going to tell it again. It's, it's worth telling again. Reuben and Fiona. You see, if you ask Reuben and Fiona, they would tell you that their love story was beautiful. But when you got to the wedding, they would say it was out of this world. And then when you got to the, to the honeymoon, if you asked them about it, they would say it was a dream, our love story. The wedding was out of this world, but the honeymoon was lousy. In fact, it was horrible. What happened? You would ask. They would tell you Fiona's father had rented a suite, a suite to the tune of about 3000 a night. It was a little bit of an investment. The fact that that doesn't phase you means that you and I stay in different hotels. <laughs> but try to see it from my perspective. 3000 a night. After the reception, they said they drew, drew, drove off in excitement only virgin love can experience. They arrived after midnight, tired but happy. They got, they got into the hotel and found out their room would be on the top floor. They entered the elevator, which was the size of Reuben's apartment. In the elevator in the corner was a, a, a pitcher full of fresh water and a vase with fresh flowers. They got to the end of the hallway on the top floor. Reuben inserted the key into the door and opened it, swept up Fiona and carried her across the threshold just as they had dreamed, and once inside, nearly dropped her. It was hardly bigger than the elevator. There was a, a, a small love seat that they found turned into a hide-a-bed. There was a, a, a restroom, but it had no shower. It was just a half bath, and Fiona began to cry, and Reuben was furious, of course, but it was after midnight, and they decided to make the best of the hide bed That next morning, they were up early, not always because they wanted to. They couldn't sleep any longer on the hide bed down the hallway and to the elevator. There was fresh flowers in the elevator, new ones from the night before. Down to the lobby they went, and wouldn't you know it, the manager was standing there. How are the lovebirds, he said. Oh, he shouldn't have asked. Reuben had to hold Fiona back as Fiona tried to explain exactly what her father would do to him and his company and what would happen next for the money they put in to the place that they got. Confused for just a moment, the, the, the manager said, please, let me, go, let me go with you and see what you saw. I, I, I'm lost at what you're describing. And up that elevator and down that hall to that same room, opened the door, and there it was, that pathetic little space. Oh, said the manager, you stayed here? You didn't open that door? No, said Fiona. Probably another closet like the other door we tried to open. No, he says. And then I'll let Reuben describe it. Reuben says, as I flung open that door, we were amazed at what we saw. The large room was the size of a house. The entire back wall was comprised of a series of picture windows overlooking the city. There was an indoor pool and a bubbling jacuzzi, a beautiful table set with more gourmet food than two people could eat in a week, a surround sound stereo system, and a large bed centered on top of a pedestal to be ascended by five stairs. And we stayed on a hide bed Beloved, some of you, some of us, are living our Christian experience in these final moments of earth's history with one foot in and one foot out. Come on, I'm, I'm in. I'm a teacher on this campus. I'm a student on this campus. I've been a Christian and, and part of this church for longer than you've been alive, preacher. Fair enough. But are you living in the vestibule of your Christian experience of surrender and relationship with Jesus. Beyond cultural Christianity, you've been hanging around because you were born in this church. Beyond formal religion, because you get enough, just enough to feel you need to make it to heaven, but not enough to change your life. Beyond intellectual spirituality, where it's all about what you know and do you know. 
I invite you into a deeper please. The book of Revelation, the Lamb is appealing to us. Through this sacred service of communion, this service is an invitation from heaven to accept heaven's sacrifice. But it's accepted with a personal sacrifice, a surrender of our own lives, a determination that we will follow the Lamb wherever He goes. And if He goes through personal sacrifice or suffering, we will choose trust. We will choose this relationship over every other relationship, over every other profession, over every other entertainment. We will choose this relationship. That's what the communion is about. Take, this is my body, this is my blood, which was given, stretched out on the cross for you. It can be ours today. The eternity can be ours today. As Jesus stretched out his hands on a cross, he spoke the words, I'll put them on the screen, I am with you every day until the end. And then I'm coming back for you. But I'm only, I can only get those who have stuck with me. So what's your decision? Young person? Teacher? Family? What's your decision?